Hey everybody, on today's episode of Pichal's Garage, I am here with Adrian. Come that way, what's up? And we're here to work on his uh, 2015 VW Passat, and we're going to be doing some Solar Works coilovers, uh, so you can see how pretty much 4x4 and the wheel gap is just ridiculous on this car. I mean, look at this. <laughs> I can fit this much inside of it. We need to fix this on this car because, oh man, it needs some loving. So, without further ado, let's get to work because, you know, as always, this is Pinch House Garage. We're going to break, fix, and repeat. So, as uh, Adrian here is going to be jacking the car up, we already broke loose the wheels. Uh, so that's one of the most important things you got to do. So while he's jacking it up, using the um, the lift points on the pretty much on the pinch welds, uh, you got to remember when you do that, you're going to need space so you can fit the jack sense on the control arm, which is extremely vital during this because the control arm is going to be out of the way and give you the ability to do the job correctly from below and above. Uh, without causing the suspension to have any tension on it. Um, we always break loose the wheels before, before we do any work on the car because that way we can get the wheels off a lot easier without using an impact gun. Next stop is uh, we're going to pop the hood open. Uh, the reason why we pop the hood open is that, again, we're going to show you what to do during the process. We get the wheels off, got the car on jack stands. Um, I'm going to have Adrian do some of the work already ahead of time before anything else gets done but uh, I will be walking you guys through the other side. And there's not much you need to do um, to do on the back. Pretty much you're gonna need the two 16 millimeters above, right here. Uh, you're gonna need a 21 or a 22 for that guy for the shock. And then down below the 18 for the lower control arm uh, bolt. Uh, you will need a wrench and a ratchet to do this job. Once you do that, it'll just draw. Make sure you put a jack underneath there, and that will allow you to keep the compression on the spring so you can drop the spring slowly and it doesn't shoot out on you. It's just a safety precaution. Never um, uh, just unbolt it without using the uh, jack underneath the lower control arm, okay? Just for safety reasons. Um, break loose that nut. Once everything is off, you're gonna reverse the process, but you wanna mount the shock first before you mount the spring. Um, mainly because it's going to be pretty hard to get the spring in if you don't do that. Again, two 16s, and with those 16s on top, you make sure you thread those in by hand. Uh, we are going to reuse the, um, the, the stock top mount, uh, and that's probably it. The aftermarket coils do come with the uh, new um, bump stop, but that's it pretty much. You don't need everything else that comes with it. Uh, but just as always, make sure you hand thread anything you do before you use any tools to put them back into place. If not, you will cross thread it. Let's get to the next step. All right, so we're back. You see this cap right here? This is what goes on top of the shock. Adrian forgot to put it on there after we removed it. So I'm going to bring it back to him and have him put it back on the dang shock. Yeah, that's right, Adrian. <laughs> oh man, my old wheels. I uh, had these on my old Passat. Freaking loved them. I'm glad they're back on another Passat, by the way. Um, so, what we're gonna do is look at the SolarWorks coils that we're gonna be using. This is the. These are the rear shocks right here. Um, we already installed the previous rear shock, and you see the bumps off here. We had to reuse only the top shock, um, and pretty much we just removed them with an impact gun. You want to reinstall them with the um, pass-through socket and a wrench to get the new ones installed so you don't damage anything in the process. Um, they already come with a cover, a dust cover and bump stop, so no need to reuse the old stuff. Uh, the only thing you need to reuse is the shock top mount. That is it and the plastic cover so you don't damage or have the uh, nut exposed to the surface. Uh, here we're going to be removing or breaking loose the 18 on the bottom and the 21 for the shock. Uh, during this process, I already broke loose the two 16s on top. I did not remove them yet though. Um, so just remember 18 on the bottom with a wrench. Um, 
use the wrench to counter hold and your ratchet to actually break loose the bolt. Once you have it broken loose, if you have an impact gun, go to town with it, no big deal. Um, but remember, before you actually completely break it loose, Adrian has the little jack right now um, because he used it to put pressure on the control arm. So we need to make sure that we do that uh, before you take that bolt completely off. And if not, again, the spring is under uh, amount of tension. You run a risk into having that spring shoot out at you or just the control arm dropping really hard and damaging something. We always recommend just be careful. Don't, um, don't rush your job during this process. Uh, right here, you'll see I already took the nut off, but I didn't take the bolt off completely. A lot of it stayed right there. I'm gonna get the jack uh, right here and put it underneath that. Uh, that way, again, we're gonna put a little bit of pressure underneath it. Uh, this will allow for the bolt to come out a lot easier and also prevent damaging. Now the control arm is unbolted. We can now remove the spring right here. This one I'll give you access to the shock mount bolt, which is a 21. Uh, and you'll see right here is the 21 that you're going to need for the shock mount and above obviously the 216s to remove the actual shock uh, completely from the system. And once we remove the shock, we're going to show you here uh, down below our, uh, the perch for the actual spring. Uh, that's also the spot where it mounts the 21. And you'll see here there's a little notch actually on the perch that tells you where the spring has to be. That's extremely vital during this process. Above is the perch. You're going to be using the, uh, the perch or the height adjuster that goes on top of that with the spring. We'll show you how the sandwich combo goes together. It's pretty simple. Next step, we're going to be removing the shock top right here uh, using the impact gun. Um, part of the process is pretty straightforward. Put your foot on pretty much the shock, get your impact gun, and you're going to zip it right off. If you don't care for reusing this stuff, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, just remember, you are going to re you are required to use the oh excuse me uh, the dust boot, and we'll show you guys how that goes back on with the with the new uh, bump stops that you'll get with the the new coilers. So now I'm going to start removing the, uh, the shock top, put the nut back on just really quick. And then pretty much I think this is where we take off the, the cover. Oh nope, I stand corrected. The uh, dust cover is not required to be removed because the new coilovers come with a new dust cover and a bump stop. So pretty much all you got to do is pop in the new one. And then tighten, uh, torque to spec the, the nut, and then put the dust uh, the dust top back on top, and then the uh, torque it to spec, and you're ready to go. Uh, as remember, always and always you have to reuse these tops, and make sure you cover the uh, the, the the shock top. Now, right here, we're gonna get the shock actually mounted. Now, we're gonna mount the two 16s that go on very top right here. Uh, these two 16 millimeter bolts have to go in by hand. If they do not go in by hand, you're going to strip them. This is just a fact. Uh, the reason why this happens is because you have to go in at an angle. They don't go in straight. They actually go in at about like 15, 25 degree angle. And because of that, it makes it difficult to go and put them in straight. So I always, and I emphasize this, always put these in by hand, get at least three to four threads in and then you can zip them on or ratchet them on after that. Once you get them on, you'll see that the shock will line up with the spindle. Um, this is probably the best part to get ready to mount the lower 21 millimeter bolt. Remember, you gotta put that bolt in first before you put the spring in place because if you don't, you will not be able to torque that bolt in place. Um, and then it's just, you're gonna take it all apart and then do it all over again. So remember, get the bolt on, line it up. Um, you'll, it, it won't be perfectly lined. You're gonna have to wiggle it uh, left and right, up and down until you get it lined up. Once it threads all the way in, torque it to spec, 
and now you can actually mount your spring and then you can reinstall the lower bolt that goes on the control arm. All right, so next step here, I'm uh, pretty much give you guys a quick rundown. Um, so now I put the spring in. The spring is pretty straightforward. There's a flat side and a round side. The round side is what goes down and uses that perch that has a little stopper. You're gonna turn the spring until it stops. And then right here, you'll notice the flat top of the spring uses the upper perch. Uh, you'll notice that I also put the, uh, the set height for the, uh, the perch height about halfway. I typically do this always for spring settling, so I'll give it like a preload. Uh, that way you're not slammed. Uh, right here, you'll notice I gotta line the bolt up down there, down below. Now, remember earlier, I, I told you guys, you gotta use the jack. If you can see um, my buddy in the background, he's using the jack to actually push it up, line it in, and slide the bolt in. It's very, very straightforward. Just remember guys, take your time. If not, you're gonna hurt yourself, but you, you got it. Now we're back over here. Since we got the rear installed now, we're now gonna be working on the engine bay. Um, we gotta get ready to pretty much get the front shocks removed and ready to install the new coilovers for the front. So there is a rubber seal that goes right there on the cover. You're gonna need to yank that off. Take your time, it's super easy. Just like that. <laughs> And then typically some of these cars have clips underneath them, but this one doesn't. Uh, usually you'll see like a metal clip that holds it in place, but here pretty much, yeah, you your little cover here, set it aside. Pick this up. There's gonna be three 13 millimeter bolts underneath. Um, traditionally you have a little bit more space than that. You can pop it off if you wanna take the wiper blades off. Just get a 13, in, 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet and then go to town and break them loose. Break them loose. I emphasize that wholeheartedly. Do not remove them. Just get them a little bit loosey-goosey. That's all you need to do during this process. Do not, again, remove them. Not yet. We'll get that later down the, the line. It's gonna be the same on both sides, just so you guys know. Now we're making down here to the shock, or pretty much the strut. Uh, this is known as a McPherson strut. Now there's the brake line and the ABS sensor. They have to be unbolted. You have the bolt that's right here for the uh, end link that has to come off. You don't have to take off the lower one. You gotta take off the top, the top bolt. And then you got the bolt for the actual strut here. And this is what actually clamps it down in place. Uh, you're gonna need an, uh, a, a triple square socket to get that off. And then um, like a chisel and a hammer so you can uh, pretty much pry the back open you can get yourself a spreader a spreading tool but I mean everybody's got a chisel and a hammer so once you get that it's gonna get loose and you have to wiggle it up around and then you'll be able to get it out well, again we'll show you guys how to do it. it's not that hard it's just a pain in the butt yeah right here just you should be able to take off the 10 millimeter bolt and that, that line will take everything off. So it's just out of the way. You don't wanna damage it. Um, so make sure you remove the 10. Also unclip the wires and remove the line itself. There's a little clip right there that you're gonna require a flathead screwdriver to pry it open. Um, we're not removing the lines permanently from the system. We're just removing them out of the way. Uh, we wanna prevent any type of damaging and pulling of the lines, okay? Now, when we remove the end link, make sure you push it uh, all the way down because we wanna be able to remove both end links first because the sway bar will put pressure on the axle and prevent the pretty much the shock from coming out. Uh, down below, you gotta remove the three 60 millimeter bolts for the ball for the control arm as well. You're gonna need a flathead screwdriver to pry it open so you can get it even further down. All right guys, let's get to, go. Get to work. All right, so we removed the shock already, but we're gonna tell you guys how we did it. So, we again, we loosened the top three bolts, and then we went down below, 
and we um, we remove the control arm by removing the three bolts underneath and then we start hitting it using the chisel and the hammer to pry spread the uh, spindle open uh, we hit it up with the hammer and then just pretty much as we hit up the uh, strut kept on coming up and then by the time we were there it popped right out now sometimes you might have an issue where it might get really tight you want your buddy to step on the spindle and push down but remember you got to push down on the control arm and make sure it's unbolted because if not you're going to have some issues now you see here the lines are, are removed uh, that way we have less tension on them and we have prevent him from yanking or getting damaged during this process because you have a possibility of damaging him because you drop the spindle and just rip the line so be forewarned guys yeah that, that control arm you gotta remove the three bolts and then pop it open and take it take the spindle off the control arm and yeah the end link is down and out of the way and make sure you remove both end links to do this job no matter what you can't have them one on on one side and one on the other. You got to make sure they're both removed. And that way it prevents it from pushing up and that way you can actually pop the spindle out. So now that we pretty much reverse installed, removed the shock, used the new um, the top and put it back on the new coilover, make sure you drop the spring all the way down that way it's loose, not as much tension. And then on the actual shock itself, there's an arrow on the back. That has to be pointed on the inside of the chassis. And then with your buddy, make sure he's there to put the three bolts on top while you hold it in place and guide it for him. Now here's the next vital step of the process. Make sure um, you got the chisel on there. Your buddy bolted everything on nice and snug and then now you're gonna pop in that pretty much this the, the, oh, the take the chisel out I'm sorry and now you're gonna slide in the top and make sure you try to put that control arm back in because what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have all that weight and you're gonna try to get that strut into there without without it being in the control arm and that becomes a pain in the butt so Make sure we put the control arm back onto the spindle or onto the ball joint. And then once you do that, um, you will be able to mount the strut to the spindle after. If not, you'll never get this to go back together the way you had it before. This part is really annoying because that spindle weighs a ton. All right, we're back. So now that we mounted everything right here, to we'll show you, make sure uh, everything's lined up correctly, nice and snug, and then the end link. If it doesn't reach its actual home place, you're gonna need to get your uh, jack underneath and you're gonna have to push it up so you can line it back up to the, uh, the mount, its original mounting place. One of the issues that you're gonna have though is that it, you might rotate back and forth with the jack underneath when you're trying to compress the spindle into the shock. So just be careful, because uh, you need to be able to move, uh, wiggle the spindle forward and back to let that shock drop into place. And then yeah, once you're able to do it, slide your bolt in, torque it down, or get it nice and snug, and then get that end link back in. Yeah, from here, make sure, again, Everything matches the way it's supposed to. You'll see here it's not the right height. We're gonna need a jack to pretty much push it up or pull it up with by hand and then we'll be able to slide it in. There you go, see with the jack. And then uh, pretty much you're gonna need to push it up so it lines up back into its actual home. Um, that way you can pop that sucker in. Sometimes when you have when the coilovers are perfect, you don't have to do this. It's just really random when this happens. Once you're done, enjoy, you know, put the wheels back on, get everything torqued down and ready, and then enjoy your final results. Now, before we go any further, we got the wrong springs with these coilovers, and we'll show you why. The car 
sat higher than when it came in. And the reason for this is because we got coilovers it does for the correct car. However, they're for the wrong uh, combination of car. This is a Passat, but it's a TSI Passat. And for some reason, we got the coils for a TDI. They're the exact same um, shock. It's just that they have a much more tension or they're more uh, stiffer spring. So the car sits higher. Um, and that kind of sucks because we did all this work and it's, it sits higher than my car. <laughs> it sits higher than my wife's wagon. So we're gonna pretty much come back and SolarWorks already gave us a heads up that they're gonna actually swap out the springs on this uh, to get us the appropriate springs on this car to get the car to sit correctly. So besides that though, I mean, it doesn't look great, it doesn't look bad. It could look substantially better though. That's for damn. So he's gonna come back later in the week and we're gonna swap everything out for him and then we're gonna take care of this problem. So the Passat's back and we finally got the right springs on it and the car is now officially low. Now I'm not gonna say really low, but it is a big, big difference in comparison to what it was when it came last time. Uh, it was literally four by four in with stock suspension and aftermarket coils because the wrong springs were provided for this specific chassis. Now you guys gotta understand, it's not SolarWorks' fault, it's not Eurotuning's fault, it's just there's so many different engine types for these cars, so it does change the way um, pretty much the, the geometry works due to weight. Um, this is a 1.8 or 1.6 1.8 liter, it's not a 2.0. All right, so back to what we're talking about. So we had to change out the springs. Now what we're doing is waiting for the car to level out. He's gonna be driving it for a while. Hopefully he sends me some updated pictures of it and to see what the end result is. But currently we got new springs due to the body type. There is actually different uh, types of springs for this car with the coilovers. You guys gotta understand that it does happen. It's not SolarWorks or Eurotuning's fault, um, it's just there's more than one engine for these cars, so it changes the, uh, the weight and the overall way that the car sits. So, that being said, it still looks really good. The back is squatting just right. The front, eh, not so much. It needs to go down about another quarter inch, maybe uh, maybe three quarters of an inch, uh, two quarters of an inch for it to level out correctly and actually look correct. So we're hoping when he gives it a drive, it's gonna just end up being the way it's supposed to be. But it looks good. Um, this side, not so much, <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to be honest, it's got a little bit of damage on it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Once, once we update it, then we'll finish the aesthetics again, <laughs> but again, it's a clean car, you know, besides that blemish on the side, it's definitely a clean car. So thanks again, everybody for watching this episode of Pinchal's Garage with Adrian and his Passat. Nice and clean. I love the color. Actually, I don't even know what color this is. Yeah, uh, desert gold. Desert gold. It's a pretty cool color. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Peace out, and you guys have a wonderful day.